Hey guys, JJ here from Softer. I'm your community and education lead. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use our brand new feature, Conditional Forms, in an end-to-end -end build. We're gonna be using a use case for an employee onboarding form. I'm gonna be showing you how to create the form, how to create multiple steps in branching logic to use answers from previous steps to dictate what step they go to next. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. So without further ado, let's get started. Here I am in the software studio. I have the ability to start from scratch, start from AI, or to go with a new template. In this case, we're gonna go with an employee template and we're gonna pick the employee onboarding. We're gonna use this template. We're gonna select our data source. We're gonna copy it to Airtable. This is gonna give us a data source with all the temp data ready to roll. I'm gonna update the name of this just so I can make sure that I can find it within software when I return. So client portal. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna go back to software. You see this up here. Can I go back, go to my application and here I am, I'm loaded with this template. My database is connected. We're ready to get started. So I'm on this new onboarding template. We wanna make it so all new hires have to fill out a form before they go here, okay? So first thing we need to figure out is our user groups and user permission. So I go into users and I go into user groups and I see we have two different groups. We have an HR team member and a new joiner. And today in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the new joiner. And if I go into edit, I can see that team is not HR, so they're not an HR representative or onboarding is not complete. And that's the big thing here, right? Onboarding is not complete, all right? So in this case, any of the folks that are new joiners in this sense, onboarding is not complete, they will be, will be a part of this user permission group, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to pages and we're gonna click on add page and we're gonna create a new page called onboarding. All right, now on this page, we can click on add a block, go over to your form and click on conditional forms. And so you could see here automatically that we're pulling in the styles for your application for this conditional form we can choose a destination where we want to send data from the results of this form. We can choose a data source, email campaign like MailChimp, MailerLite, or automations like Zapier and Make. We're going to use our data source and we're going to pick the data source that we just created. I'm going to look for my client portal one and client right there. There we go. And then we're going to be pulling from the table called team members. All right. And then we want to figure out if how many times can someone submit this? Well, in our case, an employee only needs to submit this form once. So by checking this box right here, it says a logged in user can only submit once. Keeps it unique in that way. Fantastic. Here's a success message. What do we want them to say or what do we want to say to the user after filling this out? We can modify it just by messaging or changing the content here. Thank you for filling out the, this form. We will be in touch. Finally, we have an action. What do we want to do after the form is completed? Do we want to go somewhere else? Do we want to open a new thing? Now note that this is separate from sending the data to the data source. This is a action from a client side of where do we go next, right? And in our case, let's have them go to the homepage. All right. So they sign up, they go to this page first, and then when they're complete, they go to the homepage. But how do we figure out what page they go to after they sign up or sign in for the first time and they're under the new joiner user role. Well, we can go to pages, we can go to page rules and we can say for the new joiners, after they sign in, let's send them to the onboarding page or after they sign up, let's send them to the onboarding page until they complete their onboarding and at what point they will then go into the home page. Okay, so that's how we can use our page rules to figure out where these users are going from a page redirection standpoint. All right, so we have our page redirection set up. We have our user permissions set up. We have our action and data sources set up. We can also add title and description here. If we want to add anything onto this, we can add what this button says in terms of submits or finish, you know, anything we want to do, we can adjust that. We also have different form layouts. So if we want to try a different form layout, whether it's a half image, a video, a big text, a centered form, you know, there's a lot of different stuff to choose from. I like the half image. I think it looks pretty good. So we give that a try. Otherwise, let's go over to our questions. Now this is 
a really big difference than our first forms, our original forms, right? Where we have multiple steps here. You can add steps. You can update the names for the steps. So maybe this would be a non-engineering step. And this can make more sense in a second. And then we'll add another step. And another step would be called the engineering step, right? And then maybe this up here is the form entry. And this is where all folks are going to go to get started, okay? So we'll say personal information. We can remove the description. And then we'll say full name. That's good. We're going to map it to the name. Now, after that, we also want to add a, another section, and this is going to be a start date. Okay, so let's find a date and we're going to find start date. And there it is. We'll say start date, right? And then finally, I want to add another section and I want to say your department. So this is going to be a drop down. It's called Teams. And we're going to auto sync that data from our data source right here. It's called engineering, all that kind of stuff. So we bring in the options for you. Fantastic. And then we're going to say, your team, let's say department, that sounds a little bit better. All right. So now we have these three fields and we have placeholders there, but we can also remove the placeholders if we want, as we have done with the others. There we go. And a placeholder there, we can move that as well. That's fantastic. If we want to adjust the styles at any point, we can go over to the block, the field, title and description, but we can adjust all those styles, whether it's a bigger size, more roundness, different text alignment colors of the font or the button, the font family, all of that is adjustable over on the styles and there. But otherwise, let's get back to questions. So we have our first step complete. All right. Now we want to have a another step and this is our non engineering step. Okay. And so for this step, let's use a long text and let's have a question that relates to the previous experience. So tell us more about your previous or we could just say previous experience question mark right now we do need to go back into our air table table and we need to make a new field for this called previous experience and it's gonna be a long text we're gonna create that field that's fantastic so we have previous experience here and i also want to add while we're here maybe another column here called allergies We'll ask them their allergies at this point too. And this could be single line text, which should probably be fine. So we have these two. All right. And this would be for our, for two of our steps, but let's do another one here. Let's also go in and do software proficiencies. And so for software proficiency, this is going to be a multi-select and we're going to allow for the engineering, the folks that click on the department engineering, they're going to go to this step and we're going to ask them, what is their software proficiency or, you know, what programs, what technology stacks do they work with best, right? So in this case, we can say C plus, we can say JavaScript, we can say Python, we can say software, we can say dot net, we can say Airtable. There's lots of different things here we can go here, right? So we're going to create that field. That's fantastic. And then we'll also do one more and we'll say work preferences. Where do you prefer working? And then single select. All right, here we go. So now let's go back to our form. Let's update our data source there. So I'm just going to have it update there. Refresh that. That's great. Come back here. Previous experience should now be there, which it is fantastic. So we have our previous experience for our non engineering step. All right. And then we're going to add for our engineering step. Now let's add your software proficiency. And that's going to be a drop down. Here we go. And we'll say software proficiency. There it is. Fantastic. And then let's add a final step that we're going to bring everyone to and say preferences. And we, we will ask them here, what is the work preference? Where would they like to work? Work preference. And then let's add another section and let's ask them about their allergies. My text. I'm going to say allergies. You have any allergies that we should know about. There we go. All right. So we have four different sections, I believe, right? So we have our form entry, our non engineering, our engineering, and then our preferences. Okay. So the way I want this to go is everyone starts at the form entry. And then depending on their selection here, if they select engineering from the department, I want them to go into the engineering step. 
And if they select anything other than engineering, then I want them to go to the non-engineering step. And then I want everyone to end up at the preference step. And then upon that completion, they will be sent to the home page. So how do we make this work? Well, welcome to our new conditional logic. You go right up here, click on this little workflow icon thing. We're going to click right there. And now we have a whole new view for the first time in software. All right. So in the bottom left hand corner, you can choose whether you're grabbing or picking. Here we have this and we can add a path, right? And we could say that all of our users that that select this information are going to go to our engineering step. OK, so that means if the form answer department is engineering add, then they're going to go there. All other cases go to the non engineering. OK, so again, we are pulling from the form answer. So whatever they select here is dictating if they go here or here. How cool is that? We could also pull from the logged in users values and get their values as well. Should we want to pull from data that they've already given to us in a previous context, but we don't need that in this case. So we're going to stick with this and then everything else. So folks that answer marketing, finance, et cetera, they're going to automatically go here. Okay. Now you can add more paths too. So maybe you want to create a separate path for legal or a separate path for finance and then have multiple, multiple paths. You could do that too. But to keep things simple in our first build for conditional forms, we're just going to keep going with this. But we now need to bring this engineering step. We want to make sure it goes back to here and not here, the non engineering step. Sorry. So we're going to have this go over here. We're going to send it to preferences. And so now we have our form entry engineering or non engineering preferences submit. And that is the routing that we're looking for. All right. But there's one more thing that we're missing here. So we got our form filled in and everything, but taking it back to the very beginning and our user permissions, and we had that onboarding, yes or no completed. Now, here's a great way for us to update that field when this form is submitted as well. We can go back to this step, find our preferences here. We're going to add a field. It's going to be a hidden field, and we're going to map it to the onboarding completed. The value is going to be yes. And when we type that in, we got to make sure that it has the same case sensitivity as the values in our error table. So it maps back correctly and it does. And so now when we submit this form, it's going to send new values to the user and update existing values. So that way, when the user goes to sign in next, they will go to the home page instead of the onboarding page. And that flow for onboarding will be completed successfully. Pretty cool, right? So now let's check it out and see what this looks like on the front end. We should be able to see an awesome looking form where I can submit my name. I submit the date that I'm looking for the department. And now if I click engineering, I should see the software proficiencies, which I do, right? I see that I see my software. Fantastic. Or if I go back and I get rid of engineering and I go to marketing, then I should see my previous experience, which I do. Okay. And then I should see my work preference in office or allergies, peanuts, and then finish. Boom. There we go. So there we have it. Conditional forms by softer. Man, is it powerful? Man, is it exciting? I told you 10 X improvement from our last forms. Was I lying? I don't think so. This is an incredible improvement. You can now do so much with your forms in softer, no matter your use case, client portals, and tonal tool, whatever it may be. You can do it now with our conditional forms, our conditional logic, our branching, using the forms values to dictate where the user go next. It's beautiful. So if you have any questions, feel free to answer them below. Otherwise, I cannot wait to see what you build with conditional forms next. This is JJ signing off for this video. I will see you in the next one. Until then.